Hey folks, Scott Walters here. Welcome back to the Bulletproof Garage. This is episode two of three episodes on our Dana 60 front differential refresh slash rebuild. And this is for Project Brutus, our 1987 F350 crew cab diesel dually project truck. <laughs> That's a mouthful. All right, in this episode, we are going to install, where are we gonna start? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> inner axle seals, all right? Then we're gonna do aftermarket outer axle seals. Then we're gonna install the carrier, followed by the pinion seal and the pinion yoke. And from there, we're gonna move on to the lower kingpins. And the lower kingpins are gonna get new uh, races, dust covers, and lower kingpin seals. All right, folks, you know what's coming next. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Here in the Bulletproof Garage. All right, folks, time to change the inner axle seals. As you'll recall, I took my floor jack handle and knocked the inner seals out, and now it's time to put some new ones in, okay? So what I've got, so I've got this handy tool. I picked it up on Amazon. It was 34 bucks. Um, looks to be well-made. It's well-reviewed. And basically what it's going to do, it's going to push in our axle seal. And this tool works for Dana 30s, Dana 44s, and Dana 60s, which is nice because I mess with early Broncos too. And I've got Dana 30s and a Dana 44 at the house. So first thing we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna put a little grease on this washer. So when we're bearing down on it, we don't end up getting any metal shavings in the housing. All right, uh, now that that's done, um, let's show you how the tool is gonna work, all right? So this portion of the tool, you can flip it over depending on which model housing you're using, which seal you have. So for the Dana 60, uh, it works like so and this seal is gonna fit just like that, okay? Um, and before we actually get started, another thing I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna put a little RTV on the outside of the seal here uh, so we don't end up um, having oil that seeps past the seal. All right, you don't need a lot here, folks. And actually, I'll probably put a little bit too much on it. All right, that's good. All right, let me grab the camera and show you a little closer what we're doing here. All right, folks, let's go ahead and get this uh, positioned. So the first thing you wanna do is and set that all the way in. All right, I've got an inch and an eighth wrench here. It was a little difficult to get it started, but once it started going, uh, it went in fairly easily. All right, yeah, and then you can feel it once it gets hard. Uh, you can go ahead and stop, because there's a lip in there that'll keep the seal from going in too far. Okay. So that is the new seal in place right there. I'm gonna wipe off some of that excess RTV. This is a side without the new seal in place. You can, there's a lip right there that keeps the seal from going in too far. All right, and the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take a little dab of grease and I'm gonna put it on the inside here of the seal where the axle fits in. Not a bunch. Just enough to help the axle slide in. Okay, folks, before I drag this heavy sucker back into the garage, I just want to point out a few things. One, as you can see, the axle has been painted. Um, so that's a pretty heavy coat of Eastwood chassis black. And I've also cleaned out the axle tubes. If you recall, 
when I drove out the inner axle seals, the old one, there was a lot of dirt and rust hiding behind those seals and in the axle tubes that ended up in the housing. So obviously I cleaned the housing out and I also cleaned the tubes out by using my um, floor jack handle and some rags coated in brake cleaner and uh, and once it was uh, fairly clean then I went and took some rags in the same floor jack handle and uh, oiled them up really well and pushed those through as well so um, the axle tubes have been clean they've been oiled um, they're not perfect but you know what they're a lot better than what than they were when we started now I believe all right, folks, continuing with the reassembly, next up is the pinion gear. I've inspected the bearings on the pinion gear, and they're both in good shape, all right? So we are going to reuse those. And the same with the carrier bearings. The only thing that we're replacing is going to be the pinion seal, and that's not going to change the setup of the rear end, all right? So if we reuse the same shims and get the correct torque value, it should work just like it did before we disassembled it. So let's get started. Let's add some oil to the bearing here. Okay, folks, first step is going to be the bearing. All right. Now, uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to tap in the pinion seal. And my pinion seal is in the freezer, shrinking a little bit, so let me go grab it. Okay, folks, it's time to change the pinion seal. Now, what we have here is a Spicer 42449, and it fits like so. And if you're not sure which way it fits, basically what you want to do is just sort of mock it up like this, all right? And you can see that there's a groove here for this dust cover um, to sit inside, all right? And it can get a, go in upside down, and don't ask me how I know. Okay, now before you install that, make sure that you've got your thrust washer in there that sits right on top of the pinion gear uh, bearing. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of RTV on the outside of the seal. Doesn't need to be thick. Again, we're just trying to prevent um, issues from happening on down the line. All right, any oil leaking through. Now that is done and I'm going to take the excess right here and I'm just going to put a little bit on the splines, not a bunch, but again what we're trying to do is obviously to keep oil from passing through the splines and creating a leak. Now the last thing I'm going to do before I install it is I'm going to go ahead and put some grease on the inside of the seal. Not absolutely necessary, but I think it helps. All right, now, and that, set that guy in place. And what I'm using to drive it in is the uh, the spindle nut socket that I have. So this is a, uh, a PTW1273, so performance tools, two and a half inch, spindle nut socket. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and tap it in. All right, that is in place. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and install the yoke and I'm also going to put a little bit of grease on the yoke and then this dust cover here. All right, now, what I have done to get this in the right position to have the right preload is I have put a few little marks just with a small punch. You're not gonna be able to see it on the camera, but I put a few marks right here on the pinion gear and I've also put some on the yoke and I'm gonna line those up. All right, those are lined up. And now I also have some marks on the pinion nut. If you can see, there's two marks right there. So I'm gonna get my washer on and get my pinion nut on. Now what I've got here, this is an inch and 5 16 socket. If you can see, it's 12 point. A six point will not fit down into this recess. So you've gotta use a 12 point, all right? 
Okay. And I am close right here. And that feels like about the right amount of torque. I've got about an, another sixteenth of a turn to go. That looks like it's lined up. Now what I want. All right, the uh, correct torque here is 250 foot pounds. So let's see if I can get to that here. Okay, I just barely hit 250. All right, folks, time to put the carrier in. I've got the races on the bearings, and it's going to slide down there a little bit. And we're going to have to tap it in the rest of the way. Uh. All right. Now... And you just want to take your dead blow and tap it in. I don't have a case spreader, so this is how it works. That may be about it. Now remember, the bearing races um, are matched, all right? So don't get those mixed up and your caps go on. Remember that we've got a, uh, there should be a stamping here that corresponds with the stamping. Uh, I've got a P here in the, a particular orientation that matches the stamped P on the cap. And the same thing on the other side. So everything here has been lubricated, the bearing caps, the bearings, and the final torque is 80 pounds, but we're just going to start snugging it down a little bit at a time. You don't want to use the bearing caps to seat the carrier all the way down if you can help it. All right, everything feels smooth. I'm going to start off in a crisscross pattern at 40 pounds. All right, let's go to 50. Lock it up to 60. Seventy. Hey folks, now I'm going to go ahead and install outer axle seals. Now, these are from Off-Road Design, but they're from a company called Seals It, um, and they keep the crud out of the axle tubes. Now, the Dana 60 doesn't have outer axle seals from the factory, but again, if you recall, when I dis disassembled the differential, there was a bunch of dirt and rust and stuff in there, so these are going to help me keep that clean. So these are fairly easy to install. They're really a press fit. They just sort of press in. I've had these in the refrigerator for, um, I don't know, a day or two. You really only need a few hours um, to cool something off and um, reduce the um, outside diameter and make it easier to install. But the way they're installed is you just put some um, high temp silicone RTV around the perimeter, just um, inside that lip there. And, uh, and I'm going to be um, fairly generous here because this is what keeps the seal in place. Because you'll see that it's not, um, it's not in there very tight. All right, so that's a generous helping of this high temp silicone. And now um, a generous helping of grease um, inside where the axle is going to ride. 
and you also want to get some around the lip to help the axle slide in and out. All right, and then it just gets pressed in, and you can see um, that it's not too difficult to get in there. And the company um, sends instructions, and they say it's just a press fit. So I'm going with what they say. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm just going to push it in just a little bit more. Um, I'm going to let this dry and let it set. And once it's drying, I'm going to come back and trim it. All right. If I try to clean it up right now, I'm just going to smear it everywhere. Um, and I want that to set in place before I start messing with it. All right. On to the next task. Hey folks, um, we've got a minor problem here. So uh, I'm on the passenger side of the vehicle and I'm focused on the lower kingpin. Now there's a race in here that the bearing rides in and the race is actually in bad shape. I can feel with my fingernail that it's got some pitting and some roughness there so it needs to come out. And the way that you get it out is um, basically you beat it out using the dust cap. Uh, now this is something obviously that I should have caught while the differential was still out of the vehicle when it would have been a lot easier to address, but we'll manage. All right, let's get after it. doesn't seem like the race is moving so it's time to apply a little fire folks I like using fire because fire lets that part know that you mean business all right now it's coming all right this thing's hot but uh, yeah you can see it's hot. Right in here is where it's nice and rough. All right. I'll put that down before I burn myself. All right. And this is what the cap looks like after you beat it out. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up some. And after I'm done cleaning it up, I'll probably heat it up again before I bang the new race in. And, uh, and I'll also, I've also got the replacement race in the freezer right now where it's been for a few days. As you should be able to see, um, and maybe even here, my fingernail is just getting caught on this uh, corroded surface here on the race. There's no really deep pitting, but it's obviously had some rust in it, and the bearing didn't look great either. The bearing, um, the grease in there looks like, you know, it was mixed in with some rust as well. So that was the right thing to do um, to go ahead and replace it. It just takes a few minutes. To do the job right so um, now we're going to go ahead and pound a new race in and uh, and then get this reassembled okay so I've cleaned out the bore here where the race is going to fit and now the dust cap comes next on the dust cap um, just go ahead and put some silicone uh, on the cap on the ceiling surface and set it in And so the dome is going to go up as it sits in here. Let's see if I can get that to stay in place. Yeah. All right. And I'll come back and paint that later. Not a big fan of having bare metal parts um, when I can avoid it. 
All right, now I've got to go get my race out of the freezer and I'm going to use this old race to tap it back into place. There it goes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to install the uh, the bearing and the seal and as usual the outside of the seal is going to get a little bit of RTV. And here we go. First the bearing freshly greased and then the seal freshly RTV'd and you're gonna need to use something to tap the seal in I found this piece of plastic in the garage that's about the right diameter in. And as usual we're going to take some grease and make sure that the seal, uh, the rubber seal inside the seal has some grease on it. Okay, folks, that is it for this episode. I hope you found it interesting and informative, okay? Be sure and check out episode three when we finish up the Dana 60 for Project Brutus. And we'll see you next time on the Bulletproof Garage.